you may have noticed that the opening of this first epistle of St. John, the longest of the three, is very similar to that of his Gospel. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. And it goes on, the life was made manifest and we saw it. Very strong echoes of the opening words of the Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the whole of the Johannine literature has this cosmic tone, the great battle between light and darkness, and the inbreaking of light into our great darkness through the Incarnation. And the advantage of the Gospel of St. John and of his letter is that it is not actually that complicated if broken down to its essential. And what is its essential? It is that we are redeemed through the Incarnation brought into light, and that that Incarnation would work itself out until the end of time in the life of the Trinity in us, which is essential love. And all the writings of St. John have that fundamental message, essential love, received and transmitted and lived. It's actually repeated many times and in similar tones each time. And we know from early tradition that his preaching was in the same vein. A curious detail has come down to us. It's that of St. Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna, who as a child had been present at the early preachings where still the Apostle John was alive and he heard him not once but repeatedly and he reports how the Christians one day plucked up enough courage to go to him and ask Reverend Father, why do you always say the same thing? Because Sunday after Sunday he would get up and say, little children love one another, and then sit down. And he calmly answered, it is all that the Lord said, and if it were done, it would be enough. Now, in our journeyings across the Christian world, we see how in practice that is outworked. Often it is very well expressed. Actually, our Holy Father is an example of one who is genuinely caring and tries to transmit the life of grace and warmth also in a human touch. That, too, we can imitate, the human touch and the welcome are the immediate contact. But then one can find, unfortunately, glaring contradictions. For instance, one might find a prayer group, a parish, a convent, a monastery, where there is much prayer going on, but where, if one picks up the vibes, there is discord, and unpleasantness. And this can go on for years, deflecting graces and blessings. And then one wakes up and asks, why, I wonder, are things not going so well? 
e.g. locations. Well, compare that with a situation where in fact when one goes to a place one actually feels in the air not only sincere prayer and therefore God in the midst but also expressed and felt charity. What happens? There, there's no need for a great recruitment drive. It just happens. I've often heard how in the heart of Paris people are suddenly not between the eyes when they come into the church of Saint-Gervais-des-Prés where the community of Jerusalem has been there for a number of years and where they have a very, very beautiful liturgy. Boys and girls, men and women, praying in perfect harmony and living what they call the experience of moine en ville, monks in the city, where they pray together very well and they work, usually part-time, this part of the community, enabling them to survive. But what is interesting there is the fact that we have precisely what can happen when there is genuine prayer, expressing a life that is there, wanting therefore the only the best for Christ, creating beauty with effort and yet spontaneity, and also this element of, yes, joy. For joy, if it's authentic, comes from grace and is the outworking of charity. An old saying says, in French, un saint triste est un triste saint. In English, a sad saint is a sorry saint very profound saying. As we begin a new year, let's ask for this grace to be naturally attractive, naturally healing, and therefore a great advertisement for the Lord, without fuss or bother, just inviting unto Jesus by warmth.